Thank you, uh, thank you so much for coming in today. I only want to discuss therapeutic services for, for autistic children, please, and what we're going to do to try to make sure that people are getting assessments of needs and the therapeutic services that they need. Um, in my constituency, for example, I have one child who was told by the HSE, or her parents were told by the HSE, that there was an assessment of needs done on the 10th of May 2021. I questioned the parents about this and they were confused because no assessment of need had been done. But I appreciate the letter that I got from the HSE on the 18th of May, which acknowledges that disability acknowledged the error in the previous response that issued stating an assessment of need was completed on the 10th of May 2021. This assessment did not take place and disability services apologised for the error. Now, the parents know that the assessment did not take place because they are the parents of the child who are looking for the assessment so that they can get a diagnosis, so that they can get therapeutic services, so that they can get into a school where the child will get the support and care that they need, as well as all of the different therapeutic services that might make the child's life easier and the parent's life easier as they try to navigate life with, with autism. So that is a problem, and I hope you, I hope you might acknowledge that. Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. Deputy, fully acknowledge the whole issue around assessment and needs and the big challenge we have. The recent court case set out very clearly that our, our process wasn't complying with the legislation, and 10,000 assessment of needs uh, need to be reassessed. Uh, based on that, so we have very significant issues today. We are working very closely with the Minister, uh, and we've worked with the Minister over the past few weeks about how we'll approach it, including last week with an engagement, which I kicked off myself and the Minister, with a whole range of stakeholders, about how we're going to go about doing it very differently. Uh, and it will, and it does involve extra recruitment, which is a challenge. We are looking at the recruitment profiles, how we can increase, uh, our, look at the qualifications uh, for people needed to come into the system. But ultimately, it is a significant challenge. I fully accept it. We're going to have to redesign the whole process around assessment. Okay. Need. So what is the timeline for that and what are your interim solutions? Yeah, so we are working with the Minister in terms of timeline, both the assessment of need, redesign, which my colleague and Connor will, will talk about, but on the wider disabilities issues that we have a challenge. We're working over the next few weeks, uh, likely into September with the Minister, around a range of initiatives in terms of disabilities that we're approaching to, to put together an agreed plan with the Minister around the whole issue of uh, uh, wider issues around What, what does that well. mean? What does that mean? So let me give you, let me just, just speak to me in very practical terms. So let's say, for example, I have, as, as I do, a child who's waiting 26 months um, for, for an assessment. When is he likely to get, you know, an assessment under the new plan? Or let's say, for example, there's a child born today um, down the road in Hollis Street and a, 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 an issue becomes apparent within the first year of that child's life. Under the new plan, under the, the timelines, the interim solutions and the ultimate new plan, when is that child going to get an assessment of need? Yeah, I just, just make two, two quick points I might ask my colleague to come in. Just, first of all, just to reassure, in terms of the assessment need process, it does install where a person needs access to particular services. Now, that happens in That is not the experience happen. of the breadth of my constituents, Mr Reid. Well, I appreciate just, that that may be so, but I can assure I can you that that is yeah. not so yeah, on I, the ground. I, I fully accept that. Okay. But I just want to say it's not just... The assessment need is the starting point. People can access the services while the wider assessment is done. I might just ask Andrew on to it. But yes, they so don't, is my point. They don't get they don't get the services in a universal way. And that may be so, excuse me, I'm sorry to cut across you, Mr Connor. That may be so in some CHO areas, but you're aware that the Ombudsman for Children, for example, is doing a report on the consistency across CHO areas and that that's due to be published in 2022. Certainly I find in my own area, in CHO 6, that that is not so. And it is certainly not so for the volume of parents who are contacting me. I'm also involved with Ballyo and Meadows Special School in Lachlanstown. And it's a very interesting place to get an assessment more broadly because there are children coming from a range of CHO areas and what the principal there and what the parents I had a meeting with the parents and the teachers and the principal there a number of weeks ago and what we see is very different experiences for children and families depending on the CHO area that they're in so I appreciate that what you may be saying is accurate at a macro level but I absolutely assure you it is not so no. and then you have the additional complication I'm sorry of the of a question of an intellectual disability being brought in with an assessment of need in respect of autism and how that can be com an additional complicating and delaying factor I'm sorry Mr. Connor, I spoke across you. That's okay. Um, so, in terms of assessment of needs, there's a couple of things, and I suppose the reason why we went down the road with the PTA was to try and do a shorter assessment. The challenge we have with AON is that we have different, I suppose, durations of assessment. So, we have some children who just are, the assessment goes on for a very long time. Our resources get tied up in assessing. We can't provide any intervention, and I suppose it was an attempt to try and rectify that to be able to provide intervention. And you referenced in your opening, Deputy, that uh, the challenge was about a child getting into school to get the necessary support. 
reports, we are very challenged in terms of carrying out assessments uh, that relate then to children's education. So in our discussions with the Minister, it's about trying to square that circle a bit. We have our staff working in disability services, assessing all the time, not providing sufficient intervention, which is actually the bit that matters to the families, yes. um, and then, I suppose, teeing them up for educational supports. And we would argue that maybe that needs to be looked at a bit in terms of what our role is around education and also how we work with the NEP system uh, around actually providing those supports. Well, but I think... You, sorry? Yeah. So I was going to say, but in terms of the PTA, what we know uh, from that is that we focus on the child's needs rather. There's a big emphasis on diagnosis to be able to access supports. The important bit is actually how we address the needs. So they're slightly different. I could not issues. agree with you more. And I, and I would say to you that it's not an either or sort of thing. It's very much both. Yeah. And they don't need to contradict each other. And you don't need to have a stream that delays or impedes the, the delivery of therapeutic services, which is really all that parents yeah. want. And, in, and I think the streaming of children into services is what we're trying to achieve through the PTA. But as Paul said, given the High Court ruling, we have to go back now and look at that in a different way. Our priority is to get children into intervention uh, and to actually to be able to provide supports to children and their families as early as possible, because as you know, uh, the earlier the intervention, the better for I, everybody. I, so I, I do I, indeed. I do indeed, because I have a, uh, another case in my constituency <clears throat> of a child who's 17 and is about to age out of the process and has yet to receive an assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is, and, and I don't know the area, but I think in terms of the, the very, you've referenced there are variations around areas dependent on capacity. So we know, for example, in some areas, particularly for children with autism diagnosis, the uh, availability of speech and language therapy and psychology is a huge issue. So you might go to a service where they have a physio, but that actually won't be as significant for somebody with autism potentially. So we are looking at that in terms of how we can actually recruit. We are challenged in terms of recruiting some of those disciplines. Uh, that is also part of the work we're doing in terms of trying to really level that playing field a bit, but there is no doubt that our challenge in terms of bringing health and social care professionals in, be it for disability, and the reality is the disability sector, it's a hard place to work. Uh, so for us recruiting young staff, they don't always want to go there. Uh, they will want to go to primary care, they may want to go to hospitals or whatever. So all of that, our recruitment for disabilities is tied up in the broader recruitment challenges that we experience. You, uh, you've uh, had an, a substantially increased budget in relation to this. The Minister announced an additional 100 posts and then an additional 80 posts, 24 of which were to be allocated to my area. Mm. How many of those, have of the 180, because I appreciate you can't talk about the 24, have been filled at Yeah, this point. I don't have that. Sorry, I don't have the detail in terms of the 104, but I would say that... 180. Funding, yeah, so funding isn't the issue. Uh, so There's funding no funding, isn't, not the issue. Yeah, funding is not the issue in terms of recruitment for staff for disabilities. It's actually the availability of the workforce. OK, and the position of assistant psychologist, which was attempted to be used to try to help with the addressment, how is that? What, can you tell me more about that? Uh, so assistant psychologists we have in place in the mental health uh, yeah. in terms of that was an effort to try and improve the waiting list, for example, in respect of young people uh, and really kind of coming in under the primary care banner. We're looking at that model in terms of rolling it out across our ECC and primary care. Uh, it's not straightforward. Not everybody is for it. Uh, but in terms of, I suppose, reviewing how it's worked in mental health, we are looking at that. It is a way of trying to get more capacity in uh, and in terms of just the system we're working through that based on our learnings from and mental health. And how quickly do you think that can be done? I think it's, you know, I, um, I, I don't know in terms of how long it'll take us to get them in. Um, I'll have to come back to you on it in terms of where that's at because I can't say specifically in respect of disabilities if that's what you're asking. It is this sense of, I appreciate the recruitment mm -hmm. challenge, it is this sense of ongoing drift. My question again, Mr Reid, about the assessment. The child who has been, who's five, who's been waiting 26 months for assessment. The child born today who will be acknowledged, you know, identified as having a difficulty. Getting a timely assessment under the new process that you're developing with the Minister now, A, what is the interim solution, and B, when are we going to have a timeline for the new system, please? Yeah, we, we don't have the timeline, so we're working through it in terms of what that model looks like. We've had to rebuild what we do now around assessment of need. Okay, Again, you know, we have just give me a ballpark. Is it a year? Is it three years? Is it three months? I think our priority is to go back. So in terms of the children that have been assessed under the PTA, we've had to contact them to see do they want to, so they, can, they, they don't have to go for assessment. So our priority is to reassess those people, um, if that's what the parents want. Uh, in terms of working through a new model, as Paul said, we've only kicked off that engagement last week or the week before uh, with the Minister and stay stakeholders across, so both in terms of our statutory services, but equally in terms of some of the organisations we work with. So that work is underway. I'll have to come back to you at the time. Can frame. I ask you why the priority would be to reassess children under that system rather than prioritise children who are growing up with difficulties not being addressed? Because in terms of the standing of their assessment, so there is a view that those children have not received an AON under the Act. The nature I understand. The nature of the call so they, are, they have to be given the option. Of an assessment, so that's and that and that the priority because of what exactly? What's the pressure the there that's making that more priority than assessing the high children? Court ruling. Yes, fine, but what's the time and what is it in the court ruling that says that that must be prioritised over other things? So, so those children. Or is that your interpretation of it? 
Well, I think in terms of their entitlement under the Act, so they have the people who were brought forward for a PTA, uh, they now have to, because the PTA is considered to not be an assessment of need under the Act, they now have to be offered an assessment of need. But those are the children who have not yet had an assessment of need, who also have an entitlement, who didn't fall under the category of the High Court ruling. And it's both that we have to capture. No, it's so, both. So, yeah, exactly, it's a, is my yeah, point. Yeah. So it's a chronological. So I think in terms of children being brought forward, it'll be based on the chronological. My date. difficulty with the chronological thing mm -hmm. is it just creates further delay mm -hmm. for the children who are at an early stage now, creating more and more difficulties for them. Again, it, this does, does this have to be an either or sort of thing? Can this be a both? Well, I think that's what's been looked at in terms of the model that we now implement. So that's based on, we were doing the PTA in an effort to try and reduce the time. That's exactly what we're trying to do, Deputy, just reassure, yeah. is capture both. Uh, the, the court finding did say that those 10,000 were, weren't compliant. We have to address it, but we also need to meet the pipeline that's coming through. And, you know, Deputy, it's, it won't be a short fix. This will take time. Uh, but we are looking at processes. We are looking at recruitment. We are looking at the qualifications that people come through. Uh, and we do want to go back to the Minister with a wider plan on it. You know, uh, as Anne said, I can't put a time frame right now, but it's, the process has started. And when a parent points out that an assessment hasn't taken place, that the HSE ha says it has, do you think we might respond to what parents are saying in a cultural way in the future? Um, I think you make a very real point. Uh, I think we have inconsistencies across our CHO areas, yes, in terms of resourcing, also in terms of our communications, and also in terms of culture. We have to make real differences and changes, and, and I personally have acknowledged that with the team to the Minister. We have to make cultural differences in terms, and, and in fairness, uh, that is the challenge that the whole system is working on on a daily basis. It's a really challenging environment, uh, and I just want to show my support for staff who do work in this area, uh, because we want to retain them and we want to secure more people in. But yes, like many aspects of our service, we have real cultural issues that we have to uh, change in terms of our communications and patient experience, and looking at it from a patient's ex experience and then going backwards okay, in. Okay, thank you.